Hello everyone, welcome to Church of the Harvest. From where you are right now, please worship God with us. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord? It's your words. It's your love. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? It's your power. It's your cross. You have saved me and rescued me.
There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no
Today. 
Church of the Harvest, I hope you're doing well. My name is Pastor Bruno. Pastor Daniel is not here today. He asked me to replace him. I hope you're doing well. I hope you are excited as I am excited this morning because we're here in this church so we could hear the Word of God. Thank God for the technology. It's a little strange here because we, are, we, are only, we only have a few people, a camera girl and a few technicians in the back. And uh, it's kind of strange preaching at empty chairs, but hopefully all this will be over and we will see each other soon because I really miss you guys. I really miss church. I really miss the people of God. And uh, I hope that one day we will see each other. Things are getting better and better. Let's pray that it's going to be quick. Amen. So I just want to thank the, uh, the worship team. They did a great job, a fantastic job, like always. If you liked what they did, just write to us, say amen for the worship. May God bless the worship team. Just encourage them. Give us your name, where you're from. If you live in Laval, just say hi. If you live in Montreal, say hi. Whatever, you are, whatever, you, whatever place you are, just tell us. Uh, we want to know about you. We're here for you. God is good. Amen? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I heard an amen from the technician in the back, which I really appreciate, because right now I have to tell my own amens. But I think I feel the angels also in heaven, they say amen right, right now. Amen? Hallelujah. Because that's how we encourage ourselves. Because the church is empty, like I said. Hallelujah. I have a few announcements to make. Uh, first announcement is um, every Wednesday we have ISOM uh, Bible courses, not, not every Wednesday, two, two Wednesday a month in, in Zoom. You, you could go at the church, in, in church app, uh, church center to apply. We also have twice a month with myself, we have a get together, uh, a little teaching, and then we have like, a, we, um, we fellowship together. We, we take maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and we have a great time, two Wednesday a month. You, if you want to register, you could go to the church uh, center at the application, uh, at the um, internet of the church. Second, baptism. It's going to be in April somewhere. You could go and give your name if you want to get baptized. And, you, and again, go to, uh, to the internet of the church and you could go at church center and register there. We have Sunday school also, that it, 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 Sunday school at 10 o'clock in English and in French it's going to be at 11. There you could, it's, it's with Zoom and you could go at info at churchoftheharvest.ca and register. And if you need any other information, you could call the church or you could send the message through, uh, through our website, through our um, email there that I just gave, and we will be happy to uh, uh, communicate with you, happy to meet you if you want to meet a pastor, if you need prayer. I'm available, Pastor Daniel is available, Pastor Gabriel is available, and all the pastors, all the leaders here, they're all available. If you need anything, we're there for you. Amen? Hallelujah. One more thing, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the tithes and offerings, we'll do it the same way. Uh, uh, you, you could give through the internet, you could send a check here um, if you want to, or you could, you, 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 you could me, what I do, I, I, I come here, you could come during the week if you want to and give your offering in the boxes there in the back. Uh, we will accept that too, but I think most of you are pretty generous and you give through the internet. And I thank God for you because Pastor Daniel tells me that this church is doing very, very well. 
thank you, Lord, for the technology that we have. Just a little, one more thing about COVID. Yesterday, our Prime Minister, Francois Legault, spoke on TV, and uh, uh, probably most of you heard it. Uh, certain areas, they're opening, and in certain areas, churches will be allowed to be 100 people. I'm really, really, really excited about that. Because one day it's going to happen to us, and maybe, maybe in a short while, maybe we're going to have to like increase because there will be a lot of people here. Hopefully, it's going to be quickly because here the church, I think it's going to be in 2021, our church will grow because God was going to make it grow. Amen. Our church will grow. Hallelujah. So, don't be afraid of COVID. Um, um, uh, we we have uh, 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 we we're Christians. We we're not afraid of dying. Amen. If we have to go, it's because it's time to go. Hallelujah. But if we ha if we stay, it's because God decided that our mission is not finished here on earth. Can I hear an amen from anybody here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. And I, and listen, I dressed up for the occasion. I hope you guys are not in pajamas right now and can, and if you do please go dress up okay and um, because one day we're probably going to see you in pajamas i'm just kidding so uh so dress up because it's good to to dress up and to come into the presence of the lord and to hear the message that god wants us to tell us and he wants us to share with you hallelujah god is good hallelujah the message today we're going to go to the message um, the title of the message is God is always present. God is always present. I'm going to re just read just a little verse. Uh, it's going to be 1 Samuel 3, um, uh, verse 6. Actually, it's 1 Samuel 3, verse 1 to 6, but I'm just going to read verse 6, and I will pray after that, and I will explain the rest of it from 1 to 6. So uh, verse 6, it says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. L let me pray. Father, Father, I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you for your spirit. Your spirit is here now. We believe it by faith that you're with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. You always are present, no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation. You are always there, Lord. I thank you for your spirit. Father, guide me. Bring me where you want me to go. Make me say what you want me to say. Open my spirit to your lead. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's kind of strange in, um, saying amen for yourself and you only hear one people say amen in this church or maybe four people. We were, were, were five with me. We're five here in, in, in the sanctuary. And like I said, I, 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 wish, I, I wish we could be more, but I think it's going to be over soon because everywhere all over the world, COVID is, is leaving like most viruses, that's what they do. They leave, they come, and they leave. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen? Hallelujah. Here, First Samuel 3, verse 1 to 6. I won't read it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just read one verse. And I want you to underline that David strengthened himself in the Lord. What do we have here? Here we have a story. And I like stories in the Bible because stories, they, they speak to us. They speak um, um, with a story. We could identif identify ourselves to the story, to our, to our experiences of life. I like the stories in the Bible because it, it, it gives us a lesson on who we are and who God is and how we should act. And here we have this story here in, in 1 Samuel 3. It says that uh, David arrived in the city called Ziglag. And that city was burned. The enemies of, of the Jewish people went in that city and burned all the houses in the city. 
and captured also, okay, uh, everyone living there, including all the wives, all the sons, and all the daughters. And it also says that no one was killed. They didn't kill anyone. I personally think that if you arrive home and, and your, your, your wife is dead and your kids are dead, it, it's, it's really sad. It's, it's, it's a grieving moment, but at least you see their bodies and you grieve and it, it's very painful. But if they're gone, it's probably worse because you don't know what these guys are doing to your sons and your daughters and your wife. It's probably worse. In your mind, it's worse. So here we have that story. David comes to the city, and the city is burned, and the enemies have captured everybody, the, the, the wives, the sons, the daughters. No one was killed. And it says here, David and the people raised their voices and cried until there was no more strength to cry. Wow. What a verse. What a verse. Here it says that they cried until there is no strength to cry. Sometimes we think that the Christian life is easy. Sometimes we think that, the, and I'm not telling you the Christian life is hard. I'm telling you that in life, bad things happen. And that's where we should be strong. But we should not be strong on our own strength. We should strengthen ourselves in the Lord. That's what David did. Because we see here that, that, uh, that they cried out, and after they cried out, Nothing really happened after they cried out, but then we see that David was in great distress because the people were talking about stoning him. For the people were grieved in their soul, each, uh, each of them for his son and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. They took all the sons, all the daughters, and the people, the first thing they wanted to do is stone David. It's easy to blame the leader when things go wrong. It's easy. Most people, that's what they do, brothers and sisters. When things go wrong, the first thing we do, we blame God. Let's be honest. Okay? Let's be honest. We, 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 we point our finger and say, where were you? Why did this happen to me? How come I'm going through this situation? But God did not leave us or forsake us. We will see it. God is always there. God is always present. God is there all the time. When things go good, when things go bad, sometimes people think life is, 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 is me, I hear a preacher say, um, I heard a preacher the other time say, come to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. And, and, because God is not asking you anything from you. But he wants you to give you everything. Brothers and sisters, that's not true. God is asking everything from you. He's asking all your life. All your life. He wants all your life. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't want, because most people think it's a prayer. Most people, and Pastor Daniel said it many times. They, they think it's a prayer. They think it's a prayer. They think they say, repeat after me. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I accept you in my heart as Lord and Savior. I accept you in my heart as Lord and Savior. And I have nothing against the prayer. But it's not the prayer. The prayer has nothing to do. You, we, we, we will see it later. You, 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 God wants all of, of you. All of it. He doesn't want half of you, a quarter of you. He wants all of it. Me, when, when Pastor Luigi passed away, I went through hard times too. Pastor Daniel mentions it, mentions it that he went through a hard time when, when, when his, his father passed away. But what did he do? He did like David. He did like David. Instead of um, running away from God, he ran towards God. I'm hurting. I'm crying. Run towards God and strengthen yourself in the Lord. Because God is present in all circumstances of our lives. All of it. Good and bad. Good and bad. He's always there. Always there. God was with Paul and Silas in prison. He's going to be with us. He's going to be with us. Life is not a walk into a garden of tulips. I said that in French. People think life is, 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 is a walk through a garden of tulips. You know my testimony. I smoked a lot of marijuana when I was a kid. When I smoked marijuana and I closed my eyes, I was in a garden of tulips all day. My mind was floating in a garden of tulips until the professor hit me in the head. Wake up, Bruno. Then I realized, oh, I'm on planet Earth here. Okay, reality check. Okay, 
because God, that's what, that's the mistake we make sometimes. We think that, we, we think, and I, I don't want to be a negative preacher because I'm not. Um, the mistake we make is, is we, we, we think that, that we accept Jesus and everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, it is at the end because my Bible tells me that at the end we win. But before the end, we're going we're gonna to have to go through stuff. We're going we're gonna to have to go through trials and tribulations. All the apostles went through it. Jesus went through it. We're going to go through it. But the only, the only thing I want you to focus on is that when you do have these attacks, when people leave you, when people talk bad about you, when people talk about stoning you, you strengthen yourself in the Lord. You don't take revenge. You don't, you don't backstab them. You don't talk against them. David didn't do that. David went to the Lord because he knew that the Lord, he knew that it was his only hope. And he said, listen, maybe I'm going to die, maybe not, maybe they're going to stone me. But we, we know the story. He didn't die, they didn't stone him. And at the end of the story, they win. So, but, he, but before winning, he went through that. He went through a hard time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more verse. Actually, I have a few more verses. Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41, 10 says this. So do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a beautiful promise that God is making to us. Because this is for us. It says here, I am your God. You need to know that he is your personal God. Personal. Religion won't save you. Listen, if you come here, me, people call me and they ask me, you're a priest, you're a pastor, pray for me. I tell them, hey, listen, you could pray for yourself. Well, I don't know. Maybe God won't listen to me. What is this? Pray for yourself. You know, I, 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 do, do you really know why you don't want to pray? Because you're afraid that when you're going to pray, God is going to answer you and he's going to demand change. Most people are afraid, and they'd rather go to the priest and leave it to somebody else. Listen, your soul is way too precious to leave it in the hands of a priest, the hands of a man. Don't leave it in my hands, and I don't want your soul. Keep it for yourself. It's not my job to save you. My job is to preach the truth. That's what I do. You need to preach the truth. You're, you're, you're responsible of hearing it and obeying it and doing it. I'm not responsible if you pray or you don't pray. I'm not responsible if you read the Bible or you don't read the Bible. Listen, if you come to me and you're distressed and discouraged, I will hold you ha your hands for a while. But eventually, I need to take your hand and bring it to the Lord Jesus. Here. Because he's the groom. You're the bride. I'm not the groom. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I can't do anything for you. I, I'm going to take your hand and put it into the hands of Jesus. Not in my hand. My hand, you will probably have a hand massage. That's all you're going to get, okay? And you're going to probably feel good for five minutes. In the hands of Jesus, he's going to fix you. He's going to fix you. But most people don't want to go to Jesus. They don't want to listen. And they say, because Jesus is demanding us a change. When we go to the Bible, is a mirror. When we read the Bible, we see who we are and who he is. God requires us to change, brothers and sisters. We need to change. Can anybody say amen? Hallelujah. Here, it says here that um, God has promised us strength and help. People ask me all the time, when? When will God help me? Listen, I don't understand anything. I don't know why you went through what you went through. You think I understand why Luigi passed away? I, I still don't get it. But it doesn't mean because I don't get it that God doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean that I don't get it. God is stupid. God is not intelligent. God is, uh, I, uh, it's not the way I'm going to do things. But that's why you're not God. And he is. He is the Lord. He created everything. And when he created everything, you were not there to give him advice. Lord, I want the moon blue. Uh, you flunk the test. Lord, the sun, uh, I don't like, I don't like the, the color of the water. He didn't ask you, he didn't ask me, he didn't ask anybody. 
He decided what he wanted to do because he is the creator. Us, we are the creation. We're so full of pride that we tell God, God, this is what you should do. No, God won't do it your way. He's going to do it his way. It's his way, not your way. Hallelujah. Don't be like, um, there is a song, I think it's, um, what's the song? I, I've, I've, I've did it my way. Frank Sinatra. Don't sing that song. If you're a Christian, you should probably break that, that song and throw it in a garbage can. Because it's, 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 it's a song full of the flesh. Don't throw it in a garbage can. It's no good. You don't do it your, your way or the highway. That's what most people do. I, I want to do it my way or the highway. Don't do it that way. Listen to God. Listen, I don't know why um, Luigi passed away, but I don't know why I had, prost I had prostate cancer. I have no idea. One thing I know, Romans 8.28 says, we know that all things... All things, God works for the good, for those who love him. All things, all things. When I walk through a garden of tulips, God is there. When I walk through a garden of ISIS warriors, God is there. I rather walk through a garden of tulips because the tulips, they're nice, they smell good. ISIS warriors, oh boy, they don't really like me. I'm a Christian. Probably I won't make it at the end of the day. But Whatever happens, God is with you. Amen? All things work for the good. All things. Hallelujah. And he says he's going to uphold you with his righteous hand. And, 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 and you will, and I, and he did, that's what he did to me. I had prostate cancer, and he uphold me with his righteous hand. I believe in healing, by the way. I don't believe God sent me that disease. That disease comes, the, the uh, disease comes from the evil one. But God allows it. He allows it. He uses it. Hallelujah. To strengthen me. Because he's always with me. Always. Always with me. Um, let's go to um, Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. It says here, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. Another, another version says, the Lord your God walks with you. You will, uh, he will never leave you or forsake you. Here, it says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In any situation, fear is always the contrary of faith. Always. Fear is the contrary of faith. I, I, I just want to give a point. I, I'm not sure I did give it in, in, in the French, but I want to do it in, in the English. People think that you, you will never experience fear. That's not true. You will experience fear. But if you still go, do it anyways, your faith has won. People think that in, in, faith is like, when I, will have never, when I will not fear anything, then it's going to be God. It's not true. I'll give you an explanation. If you are, me, I know a, a lot of people are afraid of flying. Okay? Uh, me flying... It's not, my, my, it's not a piece of cake for me. I don't really like planes. Because I like when I'm, my two feet are on the ground. I know God says he's going to give me wings like eagles, but I don't see no wings yet. So uh, I'm more like, okay. But I still go in the plane. I sit down. I put my seatbelt on. And I'm doing good. Because the little fear I had, okay, it, it was overcome by faith. Now, if the fear stops me to go in the plane, then the fear is won. You will experience fear. You will experience it. The apostle experienced fear, but they still did it anyway. The apostle, the Jewish, uh, P Peter got arrested by the Jewish leaders and they told them, hey, you don't preach that name again. And Peter said, listen, you could beat me up, stone me, whatever you want to do. I want to please God, not you. Don't you think Peter was fearful? He was. He was. Listen, receiving uh, a beating, uh, I don't think it's, 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 it's walking through a garden of tulips. Huh? I don't think it's like that. Amen? You will experience fear, but fear, fear cannot stop you. We believe. Hallelujah. We believe. We believe in him. And it says here that, that, um, that um, he will not leave or, or forsake us. That's for you. That's for me. Do you believe it? Do you believe this? 
Do you believe it? Hallelujah. I remember one day, I, I, I think I told that a few years past, but the, but the Lord reminded me before I preached, I wrote it in my notes. I remember one day, we, me and my wife would get married. My, my car broke and it cost me more, like $1,000 to fix it. I had, we didn't have a lot of money uh, left um, to buy milk, to buy eggs, and I needed like, I don't know me, like $40, $50. That's what I needed. And uh, before, before the other paycheck, and uh, I was a baby Christian, maybe a, a year or two that I accepted the Lord, just got married, uh, going to church, French church in Montreal, and, 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 and I could have called my earthly dad and said to my earthly dad, Dad, can you lend me $50, $60? Because, you know, but I said, you know what? I said to my wife, I, I, I prayed. I was praying in my spirit. Because, you know, you could pray at the same time you're chewing gum, by the way. Huh? It's not a sin. Because some people think praying, you can't chew gum. You can't, you can't do anything else. I was doing something in my apartment, and I was praying in my spirit. And I really heard the Holy Spirit tell me, go take a walk. And here it says here, for the Lord your God walks with you. <laughs> So I, I obeyed. I said, okay, let's go take a... I even said to my wife, I said, Sophie, I feel that we, go, we should go take a walk. And it was like sep the end of September. It was a little chilly outside. And, uh, and I opened my, 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 um, my garderobe. I don't even know how you say garderobe in English. My wardrobe. Okay, so I, I opened... I, I, and I, there was a jacket there that I didn't use since the past September. I took the jacket, I put the jacket on, and we left. As I was walking with Sophie, I heard noises in, in the pocket of my jacket. There was noises. I heard like money. And I said to Sophie, I said, Sophie, I think there is money in this jacket. The money was there maybe for a year. I completely forgot it. But God knew the money was there. That's why he told me to take a walk. Because he knew I would have grabbed that jacket. And that was the answer of my prayer. You see how God works? God doesn't work like us. Imagine, I put my hand in there, and there was about $65 in there. There was, there was, there was three $20 bill, and, and, like, uh, and, 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 and some change, which, which was about $65, $66 around there. And it was enough so I could buy my eggs, my milk, <laughs> I could buy a little fruit before my next paycheck. God is so good, brothers and sisters. God is so good, so good, so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Joshua. Joshua 1.5. It says, You're, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Can you imagine that? Look at the promise here. Nobody can be, could be able to stand against you all the days of your life, unless God allows it. Unless God says, like the Apostle Paul, it's time you to go. When, God, when, God, when your time, of, time here on this earth is finished, it's finished. But before then, you should not fear. Don't fear. One day, we will all leave. We will all go in heaven. And that's the goal, brothers and sisters. The goal is not to remain here forever. I don't, I'm 63, and let me tell you, I don't want to be here forever. I'm pretty far up with this body. It's aching everywhere. It, it doesn't want to do what I tell him to do. If you're the age of Jean-Michel, maybe you could because he's a lot younger than me. But my age, I'm telling you, my body doesn't want to do stuff that he used to do when he was 20. And if I try, I, I, I pay a little price. But listen, I want to leave. I, I, I don't want to die tomorrow. I'm not suicidal. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to stay here until God says that it's time for me to go. And when it's time for me to go, who's going to stop the Lord? And if it's time for me to stay, who's going to stop the Lord? Nobody. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. You, you, no one will be able to stand against you all your days of your life. God is always present. And in this world, you will have opposition. 
If it says no one will stand against you all your days of your life, because somebody will try to stand against you some days of your life. Somebody will. Jesus had opposition. Jesus met Satan face to face, and he was not impressed. He didn't fear. He didn't tremble. He even spoke with Satan. They know each other. They lived in the same palace a few years back until Satan decided that he, he no longer, actually, until Satan wanted to be the king. And we know the story, what happened there. He got thrown out of the palace. They know each other. Okay? And Jesus was not impressed. Jesus was not impressed at all. Hallelujah. You will have a position. People will come against you. And we, and we know uh, by reading 1 Samuel that David, the one who came against them, against him, was his own people. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. David had, had a really, his heart was really, really, really at the right place. Really at the right place. He was not perfect. But boy, his heart was at the right place. He, he, he could have become bitter against his own people. He, he could have said to his own people, you want to stone me? Who you think you are, you guys? I'm going to be the king. He didn't say that. He went to the Lord to receive strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a man of God. What a man of God. Hallelujah. 1 John 5.4. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Even our faith. If you're born of God, you are victorious in everything you do. You're an overcomer. Everything that is in this world, you will overcome. The victory is our faith. God is always present in faith. Always. And I will define faith in in. In a few verses here, because I have it uh, before the end of the message, you will understand what I mean about faith. Because some, I really believe some people struggle with that. They don't really know what faith is. They think faith is like more of an emotion, but it's not really an emotion. First John 5 3, it says, In fact, this is love for God to keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. There is no, God, his commandments, if we do his commandments, he doesn't, it's not a burden on our shoulder. Actually, it's the other way around. When we sin, we, we have a burden on our shoulder. When we go to the Lord and obey his commandments, the burden is lift off. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. And most people that I meet, that they live in sin, they don't want to follow God, they want me to pray for them, they don't want to pray, they don't want to read the Bible, they ask me all the time, it's hard. Can't do that. Oh, no. Well, I can't do anything for you. I remember there was somebody who came in the office, uh, and, 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 uh, and I told her with love. I said, listen, do you want to give this, this, this part of your life to Jesus? And she answered me, why should I? It's not his business. That's what she told me. I'm telling you exactly what she told me. She told me, uh, it, 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 this is my life. Good. Live your life. May it, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And she left, and she was really upset. Probably if she was with the same, same in the army of, of David, she probably would have been the first one to cast the first stone. Who knows? So uh, she was really upset at me because I told her, listen, you want to give this part of your life to God? She says, no. It's, it's not his business. Ah, oh, okay. So uh, I told her to continue to come. Maybe she will get it in 20 years. Who knows? But, but I, I'm not upset against her. I, I, I pray for her. I hope that she will see the light. I hope she, 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 she will understand that God wants all. He doesn't want a quarter of your life. He wants all. And it's a work in progress. I understand that. It's a work in progress. Here it says, um, it's not burdensome. There is no, God doesn't put a burden on our shoulder when we follow the commandments. Okay, and there is only two better way commandments. Love your God uh, with all your strength, your might, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do these two, you're doing good. You're doing good. Uh, it says here, his commandments are not painful. Why? For he has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what? He's a helper. He's going to help you. He's 
going to help you. He, he's going to help you not to sin. He's going to help you to say no to sin. He's a comforter. If you if you if you if you if you're crying, he's going to comfort. He's, he's going to come and and console you. He's going to come and heal you. If you need deliverance, he's going to deliver you. If he's a guide, if you need a guide, he's going to guide you. But you have to be willing to be guided. If you're not willing to be guided. He's a gentleman. He won't force himself upon you. You're going to have to say, yes, I want to, Lord. I want to be guided. I want to. And he's a power to The Holy Spirit has power. Power to move mountains. Hallelujah. Power to heal. I got healed. Hallelujah. Power to deliver. Power to preach the word and people get saved. How do the people be saved? Because Bruno is speaking. I have no power in my own strength. It's the Holy Spirit through me that is convicting your heart. That's why he's using the preaching of the gospel. That's the only way to be saved is when you hear the gospel and you, and you say, yes, it's for me, and you believe you're saved. Hallelujah. It's for me. You're saved. Hallelujah. Power to save. Hallelujah. When I heard the gospel for the first time, I said, listen, this is for me. I got saved right then and then. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Philippians, Philippians 4, 12. Let's, me, let's go a little faster here. Okay, let's read Philippians 13 here. Philippians 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That's the Apostle Paul who says that. It, 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 it's, it's a nice phrase. I could do all things in, through him who gives me strength. I could do all things through Jesus, through the, through the Lord. He's giving me strength. But when he says I could do all things, people think it's, it, the all things is when everything is good. You know, when, when, when I stay in a five-star hotel, it's great. But if I stay in a half-star a hotel, I complain. Oh, Lord, it's dirty. Oh, there is cockroaches everywhere. Ah, oh, I want to die. Well, the Apostle Paul didn't say that. The Apostle Paul, because we explained this verse with Philippians 4.12. Okay? It says here, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Here, the Apostle Paul says, I know, when I, I know what it is to be in need. Why does he know? When it, because the Apostle Paul, sometimes he had needs. He knew then, and he knew when it was plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation. Wherever, I, I, wherever well-fed or hungry. Can you imagine that? Wow. If I go hungry, it's okay. Christ strengthens me. He, he gives me strength not to eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gives us strength not to eat. Hallelujah. What's wrong by doing um, uh, 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 a jeûne? I would say jeûne in English here. Anybody? A fast. Thank you, Mary. A fa What's wrong doing a fast? Hallelujah. Is that a sin now? Hallelujah. So if you... Me... Right now, if I eat a filet mignon, I, I, I said to my wife, it's, it's, it's the food of kings. And if I eat scrambled eggs, I say, praise the Lord, it's the food of kings. I don't care. At 63, you don't care no more. Hallelujah. At 21, I cared. At 63, you don't care. Actually, you should, when you're a Christian, we will see it later. The Bible says, Paul says, you're crucified with Christ. So if you're dead, you shouldn't care if you eat scrambled eggs or filet mignon. I never heard that dead people complain about scrambled eggs. Me, never. When you're dead, you're dead. Hallelujah. And it says here, I could do every, I, I, it says here, in every situation, whatever fed or hungry, whatever living in plenty or in want. Can you imagine that? Whatever living in plenty or in want. This is wow. Can you imagine that? If you live in a half a star hotel, if you live... Praise the Lord. If you live in a five-star hotel, praise the Lord. That's how it works. That verse, that's what it means. It doesn't mean that you're going to be in a five-star hotel forever. Sometimes, listen, in certain places of this world, there is no hotels. Forget the one-star hotel. So, there is certain evangelists that go in places everywhere in this world. They sleep in a barn. For them, the barn is the best place in the world. At least they sleep. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
God is always present, brothers and sisters, with me. That's what the Apostle Paul says. He's always present. The good and the bad. He's always present. That I live in lack or in plenty. That I'm hungry or fed. And he gives me strength. That's what that verse means. Us, we think it means that, oh, when I'm, I'm in a five-star hotel, all the days of my life, and I walk to a garden of tulips, everything is going to be well. But sometimes it won't happen that way. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I know. Listen, with Luigi, I remember we used to go everywhere, preach. In Quebec, we, sometimes we, we, we left on Friday night around 4 o'clock, and we drove four hours to go to the church that he, he had to preach at the church. And we arrived, and there was 35 people in the church. 35 people. We drove four hours for 35 people. Why? Because God told Luigi to do so. Luigi didn't mind if there was 35 people, 200 people, 500 people, 1,000 people. I mean, I, I, we, we, we hear some pastors in the U.S., if there's not 1,000 people, I'm not moving from my house. I just stay in your home forever. Hallelujah. We're not inviting you here, that's for sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me read the two last verses here because I have 15 minutes and then I'm going to close. Galatians 2.20. It says here, have been crucified with Christ. I, I, I just told you just a little bit before that I ha this is the apostle Paul says, have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Here, we see, he's crucified with Christ. Dead people don't complain. If you're crucified with Christ, whatever happens, you should always thank the Lord. Praise God. We're going to thank the Lord. Praise God. I'm, I, I, I'm listening to a, to a pastor in California. His name is Jack Hibbs. And Jack Hibbs, is in, he has a, his church since COVID. First of all, the government told them to close the place. Listen, I'm not, I'm not saying we should do that. He decided that the place is not closed. And now he has a revival. And two, 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 two three weeks ago, they baptized over a thousand people. Imagine. And, and him, him is preaching, and he says it himself to the people there. He says, listen, if you don't want to be here, you could leave because maybe we're going to get all arrested. I told my wife if I get arrested, what to do? I'm ready. I even told the government to come and arrest me. And they don't arrest him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? The guy tells the government, come and to arrest me. And they don't even go to arrest him. Why? Because it's not God's will. Do you think if it's not God's will, is there a demon in hell that overrides God's will? Is there one man that is stronger than the Lord? And he even says it. Come and arrest me. They don't even go. They let him go. And he continues to preach. And there is, his church is full, full, full of people. They come everywhere because all, all the other churches are all closed. They all go to him. They say, my church is closed. So I come here. So good, come until your church opens. And he doesn't criticize the pastor that opens. He prays that, that, that are closed. He prays for them. He has a good relationship with them. Okay, they don't have a good relationship with him, most of them, because some of them really, you, you shouldn't do this, this is not right, this is this, this is that, but he doesn't criticize them. He says, listen, you do what's on your conscience, I do what's, what's on mine. Amen? Hallelujah. We're free. We're, we're in a free world. Hallelujah. It says here, that Matthew 16, 25, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, we'll find it. So if you want to gain your life, you will lose it. If you want to lose it, if you want to give your life to him, you will find it. What a powerful verse. Let me talk a little bit about fear here. Because fear is the real pandemic of this century. Fear of death. Um, but one thing I don't get, if you're afraid of, he of, of dying when you're already dead, there's something wrong. Maybe you're not really dead. Maybe your flesh wants to come alive. 
you should put your flesh in the tank of baptism and leave it there. Because baptism, that's what it is. Your old you drowns and your new you come to life. So your old you is dead. It's drowned. It doesn't exist anymore. It's, the Apostle Paul says it's even crucified with Christ. You are on that cross with Jesus Christ. Your body is there. Your spirit is alive, but your body is dead. Stop ha being fearful. Stop being fearful. Uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs says a Christian is invincible until God says your mission is complete on this earth. That's it. That, if your mission is complete, God's going to call you home. Like he called Luigi. Luigi, his mission was complete. He went home. How do I know his mission was not complete? He didn't come back. I don't know a single guy who saw heaven who said to Jesus, it's boring here. Let's send me back to earth. I, 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 I never met him. Never. And you will never meet him. Because everybody who leaves and is in the presence of the Lord, he doesn't want to come back. Hallelujah. Who wants to come back to, to this? And then your body is aching all, and, and the muscles and everything, and you're getting older, and you have more fat around the waist, and you can't see clearly with your eyes. And who wants to come back to that when you're going to go up and you're going to have a glorious body? Now I'm going to really fly wings of eagles. I wouldn't even need a plane to fly. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. It says here also, it, it, it is not I who lives. It is Christ who lives in me. God is always present now because he lives in you, brothers and sisters. He lives in you. He's in you now. God is always present because he, de he doesn't leave you because he's in you. But sometimes we want to feel him. We, we want, um, we, we associate faith, okay, with feelings. And faith and feelings don't go, do, don't go together. Because Hebrews 6 says, now without faith it is impossible to please God. It doesn't, tells, it doesn't tell us that when you feel God, you, you, you will please him. I feel God. I please him. That's new age. It's new age. Okay? New age, they feel God everywhere, in trees, in rocks, in whatever. It's completely nuts. Sometimes I don't feel God. When I wake up in the morning and my back is aching, I don't feel God. I feel like, to, I feel like calling my doctor. Give me some painkillers. That's what I feel like. But then I strengthen myself in the Lord. Like I, I do like David does. I strengthen myself in the Lord. Start moving. And my muscles are responding pretty good for my age. Thank, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. F this faith rests in his promises, not on feelings. Abraham believed. And it was imputed to him as righteousness. We don't... Well, he won't leave you or he won't forsake you. Do you believe that? John 6, 37 says, whoever, Jesus says this, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Who, whoever is me, whoever is you, God will not drive away anyone. If you come to him, he says, come, come, come. And stop being emotional. People want to feel, feel. Listen, I said that in the French. Uh, uh, Marie Judith feels God in a certain way, and I feel him in another way. Why? So we can't rely on that. We have to rely on his word. If God says, I'm healed, I'm healed. I stand on that word. If it comes to pass or it doesn't come to pass, I stand on the word. And how long shall I stand? I want to stand some more. That's what the Bible says. You stand and do it again and again and again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham was 75, and when he got the promise about a son, he was 99, 100 years old. What did he do? Did he live faith in feelings? No. If he lived faith in feelings, his faith would have left him a long time ago. He lived his faith in the promise. The promise is higher than feelings. Higher. Hallelujah. It's higher. Hallelujah. And listen to this. I'm going to finish in two minutes here. It says here, the Apostle Paul says, who loved me? Jesus loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. He loved me. People ask me, does God love me? You have the answer right now. Now, what are you going to do about it? That's the question. Here, he loved me and he gave himself for me. You have two choices. 
Either you believe it and you accept, or you, or you don't believe it and reject. There's two camps here. There is not 44 camps, two. Either you believe it or you don't. If you don't believe it, it won't do any, you any good. I do believe it, and when I believe it, it does me good. Because I know my, my God loves me, because he died for me. He died for me. He gave his, his life for me. That's the greatest love of all. Hallelujah. The greatest love of all. Let me finish with Ezekiel. Let me give me two minutes here. Ezekiel 26, 27. It says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statue. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. Here, God says, the verse that I want you to sign is the word cause. I will cause you to walk in my statue. That word cause in Hebrew means accomplish. Everything is accomplished. Everything is accomplished. It's accomplished. And, and, and in John, uh, Jesus before dying, it says, it is finished. It is finished. Everything is accomplished. He accomplished everything for us. The Christian life, we should not do the Christian life alone. God never intended us to walk the Christian life on our own. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit testifies to our spirit that God is always there, that I feel him or I don't feel him, that I have goosebumps or no goosebumps, that I'm a half-star a hotel or a 10-star hotel, that I eat with kings or with leopards. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Probably you'll have a better meal with leopards. Hallelujah. You'll be more spiritually satisfied. And that's not in my notes. Hallelujah. But it doesn't matter. If you eat with kings, praise God. If we eat leopards, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end right here. I remember one day we were in Mexico, me and Sophie. And I know a family there, a pastor. By the way, he passed away of COVID in 2019. He was 60 years old. That pastor has a church, maybe 50 people. And his only salary is the offering that people give. That's his salary. He has a, um, um, a, a little business. He sells Coca-Cola chips and eggs and milk. He has like a... Uh, dip and our, uh, style in, Mex in Mexico and play other Carmen. And I remember one day, me and Sophie, they invited us to a prayer meeting in the house of somebody we didn't even know. And we arrived at that house. And that house, there was a bed on the wall. The mattress was um, a an air a mattress was on the wall. A, a, a little table with two chairs. And when we arrived, we were like 10 people. And Sophie says, where are the chairs? And I said to Sophie, it's okay, we'll pray standing up. And one guy said, no, no, don't worry, chairs are coming. They're coming from where? We knock on neighbors' houses for chairs. What? <laughs> they were knocking on, prayer, on, on houses for chairs. And they came with... with Listen, they, they knocked on one man, uh, uh, this guy. They knock, th this guy wasn't even a Christian. They knocked on his house. And they said, listen, can you lend us a chair? We live downstairs. We have a prayer meeting. And we, 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 we're going to pray with God. We, uh, uh, can, 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 you, can you give us a chair, one or two chairs? You have one or two chairs, an extra chair, because we need it just for maybe for an hour, an hour and a half. The guy looks at them and says, you guys are praying. I'm so discouraged. I'm, can I come? And he came with two chairs and himself. <laughs> he came for the prayer meeting. And I remember th these two young people, they were like 21, and they just got married. And they had nothing in there. There was the bed, two chairs, and a table, a little fridge. That's all. But boy, when they started praying, the presence of the Lord came. The presence of the Lord came. And the guy who lived upstairs fell on his knees, accepted the Lord. Without, nobody prayed for him. Nobody touched him. He did like um, uh, Peter when he went to see Cornelius. Peter, as he was preaching, 
Cornelius accepted the Lord. He didn't even finish preaching. And Cornelius started speaking in tongues and, and accepting the Lord and saying, Lord, I repent of my sins. And he came to the Lord because the Holy Spirit was convicting him. Hallelujah. Listen, maybe you, you, you followed the Lord a few years back and now you're listening to me and you left the Lord for whatever reason. But God didn't leave you. God didn't leave you. God is here and is telling you right now that if you come to him, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Come to him the way you are. He's going to clean you up. He's going to wash you. He's going to give you a new heart, a new spirit, and he's going to cause you to walk in his statue. He's going to cause you to walk in his ways. Hallelujah. You come to him the way you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the Lord, you should do the same thing. I'm not feeling prompted to uh, pray the prayer of repentance, but you should ask God, God, help me. And he will. Help me. I repent of my sins. Just open up your heart and repent and say, Lord, come in my life and he will come in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray before we send it back to the worship team. Father, Father, thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Father, if there is um, a prodigal son who's listening, Father, touch him. If there is a prodigal um, a daughter who's listening, touch her, Lord, touch her life. Father, if there is anyone who's listening and has um, a, a couple issues, you and your wife, you're not getting along, Father, touch them. Bring peace to them. Bring peace to them, Father. Father, I pray for the church. Bless them, Lord. Bless them mightily. Be with them that your presence, like we just read, will never leave us, never forsake us. You always will, will be there. In Jesus' name I pray. And the whole church says, amen and amen and amen. I'm going to leave you now. Just stay on because we have one more worship song. May God bless you. And I hope we will see each other soon. How I live for the moments Where I'm still in your presence All the noise dies down Lord, speak to me now you have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord, I know my heart wants more of you My heart wants something new So I surrender
Who 